am excited to be back with all of you. For those of you who don't know, I am Tasha with Butterfield Alpaca Ranch, and I have been on an unplanned hiatus from the podcast and from YouTube, actually most of social media for the last four months, and um, that was due to some, what I would consider tragedies that happened in my herd. Uh, over the last four months, I have lost four alpacas, two babies, and two adults, and the first two uh, happened in August, and that kind of set off um, my withdrawal from from social media. Um, one day I lost Val's baby, the next day I had to put PJ down. And that was, um, I'm going to say traumatic for me. The next video I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about this more in depth because when you raise livestock, especially ones like alpaca in which their, their value is in their life, what they're actually producing, what they're growing is the value. Um, I'm in a community where there's cattle all over the place, um, beef cattle. It's, it's very different from alpacas in terms of the mentality because cattle are raised to die. Let's be honest. The cattle around me are. Um, but alpacas, with their value being in their life, when they die, it makes a big impact. Because it's not a normal thing, it's not a regular thing, but it does happen. Uh, with alpacas living an average of 20 years, let's face it, you, you're going to see them die if you are raising them for any length of time that's going to happen. And the reason that PJ's life, or her, that her death was so impactful on me was because I actually had to choose to put her down. It, it's not a situation I would ever want for anyone to go through. And uh, I, I will go more into that in the next video on, as an alpaca owner, how to prepare for losing your animals. Um, both, like, logistically and personally how you handle it. So, be on the lookout for that video. Uh, but since then, I've also lost... Fanny had a baby who died. And Sophie. Many of you remember Sophie. Uh, she was my oldest girl. Or my oldest, actually. She was 21. She was my only import. And I've had her for five years. She passed naturally, very peacefully, and hers was expected because of her age. Um, it was one of those situations where I, I knew any day that I went to the ranch, she could be gone. And yeah, and that just happened last week, so it's not, not that old. But with that one, I'm at peace at. With PJ, if I think through the scenario four months later you know I'm still gonna cry so in the next video I might be crying um, but <laughs> let's see I have my notes here to remind me what I want to talk to you about you know what I wanted to say thank you to all of my faithful viewers there are so many of you who regularly comment and keep in contact with me on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and I've really come to treasure the community that we've built here. I, I really, I really appreciate each and every one of you. And since my last published video, we've actually doubled the number of subscribers for the channel. So there's a number of you who are new, and I want to welcome all of you to um, kind of an interesting time for me to be coming back to the channel. Uh, interesting time for you to be a new subscriber because <sighs> I have some. Uh, revelations about the channel, I suppose, some decisions that I've made about the channel, and so uh, I guess I'll reveal that right now, that um, I'm going to move away 
sorry, I keep touching my nose. There's a little, I don't know if there's a little hair on there or something, but a little itchy. But I'm moving away from a podcast format to more of a vlog format. Um, and that's for two reasons. One, the whole purpose of this channel was to share my alpaca life with people, to bring awareness about alpacas, and to educate people about alpacas. Um, both people who want to use alpaca products, specifically yarn. Okay, let's be honest, fiber arts is my thing. Um, so yeah, yarn. But, but also those who are wanting to raise alpacas. Um, those who might be interested in alpacas. There's honestly not a lot of information about alpacas out there, especially in video. There's a lot of articles, sure, um, and there are some videos, you know, specifically on YouTube, but not a lot, and certainly not any that give you a realistic perspective of what it is like to raise alpacas. So, with that being said, um, most people are not going to sit and watch a video that's an hour long. Okay? <laughs> and if the whole point of the channel is to get information to people, then I need to present it in a way that will appeal to more people. And research shows that videos that are over five minutes are not going to be watched nearly as often as those under five minutes. Now, naturally, this video is not going to be under five minutes. I mean, I'm already past five minutes, I can see. But um, I want to be closer to five minutes than an hour. Um, mine might be more like 10 minutes. I don't really know. Um, but we'll see. I just want to get information to people in a way that is going to reach the most people in the best way. Um, and then on a personal level, that's less work for me. Um, doing the podcast actually became pretty unrealistic for me. Besides shooting all the footage, um, the podcast being all these segments, you know, it's a show. You have different segments within a show. And the way in which I was doing it, some of what I filmed at home, some at the ranch, some at the studio, it was like just a lot of bits and pieces. And then to put it all together, um, seriously, for an hour video probably would take me 12 hours to edit. And I'm not kidding. Like on a regular basis, 12 hours. So like one whole day of the week just to edit the video. And then another 24 hours to upload it. Um, that's not exaggerating. I live in a rural community where the internet is poor. That's pretty typical for rural communities to have bad internet, let's be honest. I keep saying let's be honest. Uh, but it's true, and that means that I was unable to use my computer for a whole 24-hour period. Um, and that part was unrealistic for me, too, because the way in which I operate my business with my online store, that was just not not feasible. Just heard my cat make a noise messing with blinds in the other room. All right. Um, so for all of those reasons, I'm changing the format. Um, and I hope that you're going to be able to enjoy it. I think it'll be better for both of us. Um, and I might even be able to produce more videos during the week rather than just one. So we'll have to see. Some other things that have happened since the last time I published a video. We, we, meaning my mom and myself, now have a pop-up shop in Chicago. Um, let's see. Many of you know that I went to Chicago this past summer for the Midsummer Fest that was in the Andersonville neighborhood of the north side of Chicago, which is where my parents live. And uh, that went really well. That was really fun. And so what my mom has done is for the holiday season here, she has opened up a pop-up shop in that same place. And this started in October. The Neighborhood Chamber of Commerce started to do some events um, that she saw we could get involved in. And uh, now we have like a, a nice store. Uh, here are some pictures that I took when I was there over Thanksgiving. But hats, gloves, scarves, mittens, of course, um, our dryer balls and yarn and energy mats and the things that we had there in the summer. There, Oh, socks are also there. Socks are a big, big seller. Big thing. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, little plush toys and, and things like that. 
If you're in Chicago, go and stop in. She's open on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, through Christmas Eve. Now, I did mention I was there over uh, Thanksgiving weekend, so I was there for uh, Good Friday. Not Good Friday. <laughs> Black Friday and uh, Small Business Saturday. And so we did really well in sales. And we're super excited because when I was there, we went and um, looked at some retail spaces to expand. And there is this one location right down the street. It's like a mini mall, a mini, mini, like beyond mini <laughs> mall. <laughs> um, the It's more like a consignment store kind of mini mall uh, where the spaces uh, go as small as two by two feet up to two by eight feet. So not a lot of space, um, but in an area that is... Um, has become so pricey it is a good way to get your foot in the door retail wise um, to build a, a customer base um, to to build up funds to invest in more inventory and to be able to afford a larger space so we are working on having a permanent space there in Andersonville and we'll just see how things go but on the Chicago end of things, it looks like we may have a permanent location there or a permanent presence, I should say, because I anticipate that we'll be growing and, and might be moving different spaces over time. So I'll just say we're going to have a presence there. Um, and in Nebraska, my job <laughs> has been to build the online presence. And I don't know if you've been to the ButterfieldAppackerRanch.com website lately, but it's under construction because I'm totally rebuilding it. Um, I didn't like the way that the that it was set up before. I had the website hosted on um, by people that do alpaca websites, like specifically alpaca. And I think that was a really good place to start, but it was very limited on customization. And I really have a vision for what I want the website to be as a resource. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that I want to put on there. In order to have it the way that I wanted, I needed to host it myself and build it out myself. So I want a lot of resources on, the, resources on there, different articles with lots of information, these videos, things like that. Um, I'll, I'll get more into that as, as I develop it and I'll introduce different things to you. Um, but I also wanted my own online store like a self-hosted store. I've had the Etsy shop for a while and it's just not worth it to me. I'm just not getting the traction there that makes it worth the expense. And again, the customization is very limited. So um, I'm going to have my website also have the shop and expand it with a lot of these products that my mom has gotten for the pop-up shop. So currently... Um, I, I just finished vendor events for the year where I was selling things like at a booth at, at vendor events locally. Um, and now I'm shipping all of my remaining product to Chicago for my mom to sell in the pop-up shop through Christmas or Christmas Eve. Um, and then all that stuff will come back to Nebraska for me to then be doing the website. I mean, you could st still buy stuff on the website up until the, well, once I get it published. Once I get it done and published, which should be in the next few days. Um, you can still order things. My mom will just mail it to you instead of me. But after Christmas, um, then I will be fulfilling the orders and I'll be really developing the online store. And I have visions for that too, on what I want to carry and what I want it to be, um, and what niche market I really want to do. And I don't want to give it away right now. So you'll just have to <laughs> pay, um, be on the lookout for that stuff in the future as I develop it. Let's see what else. I have my notes here reminding me. I don't know if I've already said that. Um, if I look over here, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so that is the website, the pop-up shop. Um, Thunder is back. Some of you may remember Thunder from last winter. Thunder is a llama that belongs to a friend of mine who allowed me to use his property for my alpacas when I first moved to Nebraska. Um, for the first three years, they stayed on his property. Um, and when I first got the alpacas, they... Uh, he got this llama to protect them, and Thunder, the llama, quickly became a beloved pet. 
<laughs> he is a pet. <laughs> he is a spoiled guy. Um, but he stays with me during the winter because my friend is a snowbird, goes down to Texas. Um, but also, since my alpacas have left his property, um, Thunder stays with his cows, um, especially in the pasture that they use for birthing. And so he's there to protect the calves from coyotes or whatever. And um, during this time of year, during the winter, the cattle is moved to fields that Thunder really shouldn't be eating. Like, it's not, not the stuff that, as a camelid, he should eat. So it's best that he comes and stays with the alpacas and my llamas because they have the type of food they need, they have the shelter they need, and that kind of thing. So um, this year, I have him with the young boys group. Last year and times previous, he'd always been with my girls. But I think he was getting a little too frisky with my girls last year. So <laughs> I am now have him in with my young boys. He's gelded, so... Uh, you know, he's not a, a threat um, for fighting or anything like that. Um, and he's still sharing a fence with the girl so he can see his old friends if he wants. But, no, he's doing really, really well. Um, and I'll, when I go out to the ranch, I'll shoot video of him so you can see. It. For those of you who have not met him, um, a chance for you to get to meet this very interesting llama. As I was going through pictures that I took over the last few months, I came across what I'm going to say is one of my favorite pictures of all that I've ever taken at the ranch, and that is of Bonnie, my cat, with Kiona, and I just think they are so adorable. Um, and speaking of Bonnie and Thunder, here's a story for you. So last winter, um, when Thunder was with the girls, now Thunder, when he eats, he's kind of a pushover. Um, if any other alpaca or llama come up to his feeder and wants to get his food, he'll just back off. He's not going to try and fight for it or defend it. Um, so I was feeding him by himself in his own little stall. And the stall that I had him in um, was right next to where I had a pile of like small bales of straw. And his feeder hung over the side that was right next to those bales of straw. And one day I was there. I really wish that I had gotten my phone out fast enough to film this because it was one of the most hilarious things I've ever seen out there. But what it was is, okay, so this is the feeder and Thunder would have his head down in eating it. On this side were the bales of hay. Bonnie was sitting on a bale of hay that was pretty much, you know, about this level. And she was just sitting there. So Thunder would stick his head down in the feeder. And Bonnie reach over with her paw and bop him on the head like a few times and he his head came bop looking out and I was like he kind of looked at her and trying to turn his food right he sticks his head back in there she bops him again <laughs> after that he wouldn't put his head back in the feeder oh my gosh it happened so fast but it was so hilarious I really really wish I could have gotten it but but because of that when I saw her there with Kiona at the the water. Oh, I really got my phone. I was like, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? So there you go. That That's what Bonnie was trying to do that to Kiona, trying to reach out and touch her. Yeah. Kiona would have reacted very differently if Bonnie actually bopped her on the head. So, okay. Okay, I am back. My camera ran out of memory space. So I take care of that, but at least I got to finish that story before it ran out of memory. Um, let's see, next up we are going to do some unfinished business, and that is the alpaca cow. <sighs> I really want to apologize to all of you who participated in this cow. It, it was uh, a lot of fun, and I saw a lot of wonderful, wonderful things that people created um, but this cow was supposed to end September 1st and that's when I was not doing anything and uh, it crossed my mind it's like okay I need to make a video at least to draw the winner and I and I didn't so I, I apologize for that and I apologize that it's so late but I have the um, 
the reward. I don't know what you win. <laughs> the prize. I have the prize and I have drawn the winner. Um, first, let me show you what the winner gets. We have two skeins of yarn from uh, Nikki of the Professor Knits. If any of you follow her podcast, I've mentioned her before. Um, but these are her hand spun. And she uh, sent them to me to use as a prize, which was really awesome. So this one on top is 80% BFL and 20% nylon. It's 400 yards. Um, and these look to be about fingering weight. And then this other one here, she's calling Sunburst. 80% merino wool, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Um, this, okay, she doesn't have the length, but I imagine it's pretty similar in length. Um, so thank you, Nikki. This, these are awesome. I mean, tempted to keep them for myself, but no. Uh, there is a winner for the cow, and she is getting this. So you get, she will get this and a project bag from Hopkins Sewing Studio. Um, many of you have watched the fiber processing videos that I did before the podcast and the last of those has to do with spinning alpaca where I had um, Emily as Emily Hopkins as my guest and she is the person behind Hopkins Sewing Studio and she creates these and as you can tell there's wonderful alpaca on there I chose this fabric specifically for the winner um, has a nice wristlet on there and then the inside is the same blue polka dot very very fun so uh, two skeins of yarn and a project bag goes to the winner of the cow and what I did with this is in the Ravelry thread where people were sharing a, their cow projects um, when the person posted their final project and the picture I wrote down the, the number for that post as you unravelry all the posts um, of a thread get their own number. So I just wrote that number down Then I went to one of them random number generator websites and had it select the winner. And the winner is Minnie McQueen. And I hope I said your name right. Uh, when I first read the name here as the winner, I was trying to decide how to pronounce it. No, I don't have to pronounce it right. Um, and I wanted to say Minnie McQueen. Maybe it's Minnie. Maybe it's Minnie. I don't know. But what was interesting is that um, you have been a faithful follower. I mean, you comment a lot here. Ravelry, very engaged um, viewer of the podcast, which was totally awesome that you won. Um, but every time that I read your name previously, I had read it as Melanie McQueen. And I don't know why. I just did. And then when I was reading your name as the winner, I was like, wait a minute, it's not Melanie. I don't know if I can't imagine you changed it. I think I just was reading it wrong that whole time before. But nonetheless, congratulations. Please send me an email or um, I guess you can message me through YouTube or you can also message me through Facebook. Either way, send me your address and uh, these items will be sent off to you pronto. Speaking of the fiber arts, I wanted to show you some of the things that I've been doing over the last four months. And again, not a whole lot because when I withdrew, it wasn't only social media, it was all fiber arts. I didn't do any spinning or knitting or crocheting or anything. Um, I was in mourning and I didn't want to do any of that stuff. The project I had been working on at the time was the cow. Um, here, let me, let me show you what I was doing. Of course, I haven't finished it, but it's alpaca fiber. Um, that might have been the reason why I just stopped doing everything. I was like, I can't work with alpaca. I'm not going to, I just can't. Um, but this is a cowl that I was working on. You can see. Um, this is 70% alpaca. 30% uh, merino wool, which I think is one of the most versatile fiber combinations with alpaca. I mean, you can make anything with this type of yarn. Um, and I still have some in my shop, so when it goes up, actually it's on, in the Etsy shop. If you want some, you can go there and find it. Um, but I stopped working with that 
and I just um, stopped working on everything. But what I have done recently, um, a friend of mine is going through chemotherapy treatment. And she chose to shave her head before her hair fell out. So she's been collecting a number of hats, and she wanted a crocheted hat um, made by me. Sorry, I just knocked the camera a bit. Uh, so she chose some yarn. <laughs> I'm adjusting my legs, and I keep knocking the camera. So she chose some yarn, and I wanted to show you what I have done with that. It is almost complete. It's almost complete. So oh, let me show you the, the pattern first. It's a free patents pattern. So there's the hat. Um, she wanted, she chose this variegated yarn as the main part. And then this dark teal, which is the color for ovarian cancer. And that is what she has or had. I don't know what you would say, had or had. They took it out. She doesn't have it anymore. Had. <laughs> so that's why she wanted it this color. So this brim, I just have a few more rows left to do before uh, it's like this. And then the sides get, um, I'll say pinned up, but it's like a button. I'll have to choose. I don't have that yet. I'll have to choose that. Um, but it's really pretty. It's really fun. I love the texture. And um, this pattern was the first in which I learned successfully to do increases for um, front post stitches. And I've tried to develop this myself, and I don't think I was very good at it. I mean, I did it, but uh, I don't even remember how I did it. So I learned a different way of increasing on a hat using front post stitches, which are one of my favorite stitches in crochet. I love the way they look. Um, now I have a lot of yarn left over in the teal. So I think what I'm going to do is create a coordinating scarf. There's enough here for a whole scarf, like more than a cowl. So I'll do like a whole scarf that will match this. And I think I'm going to do post stitches, and I'm going to experiment a little bit. I have a few ideas that, um, to k take inspiration from here and create almost like a rib effect in crochet using the post stitches um, to help coordinate with this. Oh, one other thing that's going to go on this hat is she wanted the teal ribbon, um, you know, the, the cancer ribbon, but teal being the color for ovarian cancer, she wanted that like on the side. So I have to create that as well. Uh, you'll be able to see this next time. Look on Instagram for when I finish it. Um, maybe model it for you. Okay. And her birthday here is here in like another week or so. So maybe I can finish the whole thing for that. Okay. So that's that. Um, and then the other project that I've been working on, and you would have seen pictures of this before I stopped everything. Um, and that is for my peppermint throw. Here's a picture of the whole project. And I'm using um, suggestions from Mickey of the Crochet Crowd. He did a tutorial on this throw. And so one of the things that he suggests um, is making, I think, it, I think you have to do 42 of this shape. Um, and the edges, like the next few rounds, are, are different. There's like, I want to say, six different ways um, of doing the next few rounds. And that's so when you put the throw together, the swirls are a little different. So it's not completely the same. Um, it has a more random look to it. Um, so his suggestions make all... 42 and as they're the same up until this round and then when you're done with that go back and do each grouping of the next few rounds um so you're always doing the same thing and with that repetition of course you're faster um and my initial plan was to have completed this throw by thanksgiving so i had it for christmas and i was on track 
to do that. Um, but nope, nope. Um, but this, I'm going to get back to this after I finish um, the hat and scarf for my friend. Um, and then I need to figure out Christmas gifts. Last year I made some Christmas gifts. This year, uh, we'll see. It might be alpaca products. <laughs> so, we'll just see about that. Thank you so much for joining me today and for graciously welcoming me back to YouTube. I am happy to be back in this alpaca community that we have created. And I'm excited to create new videos for you. I have a lot of wonderful ideas. And um, we will take this journey together. So I will see you on the next video.